50% of our energy right now is produced from coal. We also produce energy from nuclear plants and natural gas, and we also import energy from surrounding states. Increasingly, wind has become an important resource for producing energy in Minnesota as well, with the Next Generation Energy Act now requiring that 25% of our electricity is produced by renewable resources by 2025. Um, and so this will dramatically change, if we continue to follow this path, how electricity is produced in the upper Midwest. Um, we're all familiar with oil prices and how they go up and down, and, and with the current instability in, in the Mideast, up looks like <laughs> a direction of the future. Um, what we might not be thinking about right now is the coal has always been cheap. And in the, in the Midwest, we use Powder River Basin coal that comes from Montana, Wyoming. There's a current effort to actually start selling that coal on the international market, building a port in Oregon and shipping that coal to Asia. Um, that would make Powder River Basin coal an internationally traded commodity, just like oil is, and maybe make it not so cheap, which might potentially change the energy infrastructure. Another technology that's important and one that is, is important to keep an eye on in the future is, is natural gas production, which in the U.S. now, through our, our hydrofracking of tight shale gas reserves, um, our, our reserves have doubled. And so that's going to be playing a more important role in our um, short to midterm future as well. When thinking about the big trends, there are three important things to consider. First is as a society, will we choose to respond to climate change in a meaningful way? And this would mean a significant decarbonization of our energy system. Um, not 10, 20 percent, but really 80 percent. Fundamentally changing the way we produce energy, the way we use energy, through all sectors of our society. Second are larger geopolitical considerations, um, the price of oil, the price of coal, the price of natural gas, and the availability of those different resources and how those will change over time. And third, of course, is the political will and ability to carry out any long-term plan. We're currently existing on the, the infrastructure of our forebears, and whether or not through our current policy of benign neglect, we're able to actually invest the resources necessary for a transformation and change really remains to be seen. So when I think about transformational changes, there are three parts of this. One part of this is the technology, one part of this is the policy to actually make the technology happen, and one part is the consumer piece. Our role as, as supporters of the policy, our role as consumers to actually use the technology. And so while there are many potential technology futures which are able to kind of capture and align those three pieces are, are very, very important. Technologically, we could have a lot of different ways to produce energy, to use energy in the future. Whether or not we have the political will or, or the the value of citizens to really support that political will really remains to be seen. So the technological piece and the research we put in technology, um, while some would argue is underfunded, actually has many potential advancements to make in the energy sector. Um, if you think about the possibility of building a smart grid electrical system that would change how electricity is distributed, how it's managed at the household level. Um, so those pieces, those technological pieces in many areas are there and are ready to be used. Because at the end of the day, you know, the consumer always pays. <laughs> and we pay in different ways, both through our, our high fuel costs, through congestion on our roads, um, and, and, and we're, we're feeling right now today in Minnesota how our transportation benign neglect of our system, if we can call it that, is really affecting our lifestyle today. From the consumer side, you know, when, whenever new technology has come into our lives, we've always been very afraid of the risks. When electricity um, was being brought into homes, people complained that it might start fires, that it was potentially very dangerous, and all of these things are true. Electricity does start fires and people are electrocuted, but yet the advantages of using electricity have far outweighed those risks, and so we're able to kind of as consumers to really adapt. The political will, at least right now, remains very, very challenging. Um, and our ability to enact a policy to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and ability, our ability to um, enact policies to support our infrastructure really seem to be lacking and, and, and lacking a long-term vision. 